Good morning, everybody. I hope it's morning. Hello, everybody. So this is a question by popular demand. Uh, this com question is, the source of this question is the MBA.com official mocks. Um, I recommend that if you have not taken the mocks and not seen this question, then just don't watch this video um, because it is better to look at it after you have tried it in the mocks. Um, it's a very decent question. The level of the question is pretty good. Um, better to make use better to make use of the official mocks in the real capacity when you haven't seen the questions um, and then look for the solutions if you're not able to figure out during the exam or if you have seen the question in the exam so <clears throat> if you haven't seen this question in the exam i would say stop the video take the mocks and then come back um, if you are GMAT is in the next couple of days and uh, you don't have time to take the mocks, then uh, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so in this question, um, we are going to take a three-pronged approach. Uh, my hand is going beyond the camera. We are going to take a three-pronged approach. Number one, we are looking at what the question is actually telling us and then asking us. Number two, what are our, what are our own expectations? And number three, what is actually a least integer function? Least integer function is not that important in this particular question, and it's trying to make the question a little bit tricky and difficult. Um, but if you follow the solution, you will see that it's not really lending that much complexity to the question in, in actuality. Okay, so let's get started, right? So I'm gonna just choose my highlighter tool here. So what they're saying is there is a fixed fee of dollar two for every trip. So whatever trip you take, if you hail the cab, you're gonna take, you're gonna get a $2 charge. Then for each half mile or a fraction of half miles, you are going to get charged 0.75 each. So I've drawn the mileage here. So this is my half mile mark. So anywhere here between A and B, assuming it to be one mile, anywhere between A and 0.5 miles, you will be charged 0.75. Doesn't matter whether you wanna go 0.1 miles from the distance, 0.4 miles from the distance, or all the way to 0.5 miles from the distance. Similarly, if you go a little bit beyond that, uh, let's say you're going to this point, then at, you are at 0.6 mile, then you would pay another 0.75 dollars. So that would be 1.75. So let's see how that would look very quickly. Right, so here for any cab ride, we are sure that there would be a dollar two of expense. So we'll just put the dollar two here and not worry about it too much. Um, if you go all, all the way up to this point, which is 0 0.1 miles, you end up paying 0.75 extra. If you go to 0 0.4, you end up paying the same one. There is no change. If you go all the way to 0.5 also, you end up paying the same one. But as soon as you go to 0.6, you end up paying two times 0.6. So you end up paying $1.5. But I'm gonna write it as two times 0.75. And I will tell you why later, right? If you go all the way to 0.9, you still pay two multiplied by 0.75. So two times 0.75. And if you go all the way up to B, still you pay 0.75 twice. After this point, you will get another 0.75 because you will be beyond one mile, right? So basically this is what it means when it says for each half mile or even a fraction of half miles, you get charged 0.75. So anywhere between here and here, you will pay 0.75. Here and here, you will pay the first 0.75 and then another 0.75, okay? So it also does two things here, right? We have actually broken down the problem and what it's telling us, and we have written down our expectation of the fare. Our expectation of the fare is $2 plus 0.75 between A and 0.5, and $2 plus two multiplied by 0.75 between A and B. So 
So this is the table that I created. Basically, we have dollar two fare for uh, for every cab ride. Um, depending on how many miles we travel, uh, I have a multiplier to one point two to the point seven five fare. Uh, here it is one multiplier all the way up to point five, and then two multiplier um, all the way from from point five to one. Right. Um, so that is our expected fare. We know what the fare should be if we are given the mileage, right? Right. The question is doing something slightly difficult, and what they are doing is they are saying, okay, I want to express this in terms of least integer function, and that is where it gets a little bit complicated because you are like, okay, what does how does this translate to least integer function? Now, even if you did not know least integer function very well, uh, you can easily pick the values that I have here for R and put them in these answer choices and you would get to an answer as long as you follow these de this definition very clearly, but we'll look at the definition. Um, let's look at the definition really quickly. So here is another table. Um, if I have miles, what would my R look like? Right, so let's look at the definition first. The least integer of x, this, is, this symbol is also used for greatest integer, but here it is a least integer function. So the least integer function x is defined to be the least integer, which is greater than or equal to x. So here is how I would say it, right? So you have x. And this function mod of x, right? And this is least integer greater than, so this is greater than x or equal to x. So what that means is if x was were, if x were an integer, let's say two, then this will be two as well. If x were 2.5 though, this has to be greater than x, right? So greater than x, and this has also to be an integer, a least integer greater than 2.5, so that will be three. So for any number between, between 2.5 and three, 2.6, 2.7, this will always be three. Least integer greater than x. So let's look at the case here, right? And I'm going to do something very similar in the in the other table, but all of these numbers are between zero and one. So point one, least integer greater than point one is one. Least integer greater than point four is one, point five is one, point six is one, point nine is one, and greater than equal to one would be one also. So for this row, greatest integer of R is one, okay? Now let's put this in our table that we had previously and see how our answers are impacted. So when we have point one, let's quickly calculate what greatest integer of two R will look like because it's easy to calculate. So point two, greatest integer of point two, and we just did it like it's one. Greatest integer of point eight, would be again one, right? This will be point eight to R. Uh, greatest integer of point five multiplied by two is one, so it will be one. Point six will be 1.2. Greatest integer of 1.2. So. So let's look at what the least integer function is. This is how the least integer function is denoted, uh, curl, uh, square bracket with x inside them. This is how greatest integer function is also usually notated. Uh, but in GMAT, 
you will always find the definition to be clearly given so there will not be ever a confusion so here it is says it says x is the least integer greater than or equal to x so if i were to write x and this the relationship i have is this is the greatest the least integer function of x is always greater than or equal to x so if x were point 2 integer greater than 0.2 least integer greater than 0.2 would be 1 if x is 2.2 it will be 3 if x is 3 then this will be 3 because remember there is a equality also here quickly looking at all the values of least integer of r for these values of r 0.1 is between 0 and 1 the least integer greater than 0.1 is 1 Point four, same thing. Point five, same thing. Point six, point nine, and one also same thing. For least integer of r is always one in these cases. All right. So let's quickly go to our table and see how this applies to the problem at hand. Here is our table. Uh, let's do two r first, right? So point one multi point one is the r. Point one multiplied by two is point two. So we just did it. Equal to one, right? Least integer greater than point two would be one. This will be point eight again one. Point five will be one, and least integer of one would be one. Least integer of one point two, right? So let's write it down. One point two. This is greater than one already. So least integer greater than one point two is two, right? One is actually less than one point two, so we can't have one here. Point uh, nine would be one point eight, so again it will be two, and for one it will be one multiplied by two, so it will be two. Right now you see the multiplier, match, 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 match. So wherever we see two R, is the right answer choice, which is E. But let's do one point five R as well, just. For the sake of uh, uh, comprehensiveness in the solution, so 1.5 times 0.1 would be 0.15. Uh, greatest integer of 0.15 would be 1. 1.5 times 0.4 would be 0.6. Greatest integer would be 1. Uh, 0.5 times 1.5 would be 0.75. Greatest integer would be 1. 0.6 times 1.5 would be 0.9. Greatest integer is again one. As you can see, already we have a mismatch. The multiplier should be two to get the right fare, but we are only getting one. Right? For point nine, it will be two, and for one, it will be two. So this this is the catch here, right? This this around this range, point six, point five five, point six, point six five, is where you would have a mismatch in the multipliers. The two R multipliers would be right. And the 1.5 R multipliers would be wrong. Hence, the answer to this question is E. Hopefully, that this helps understand how you would proceed the question. Um, let me just let me just conclude by talking about the strategy again. Right. First, we went to actual fare that we would expect. because we can easily calculate it we don't have to look at the answer choices to calculate it and we got some values then we know that it has to be these multipliers right 1 and 2 so the multipliers where there is no 2 multiplied by 0.75 doesn't make sense so all of these multipliers which are dividing 0.7 by 5 by 2 are going to be crossed out the important ones that we have to make a decision on would be D 1.5 R and E 0.75 by uh, 0.75 multiplied by 2 R. Basically, here you are multiplying 0.75 by 2 1.5, and here you are still multiplying 0.75 by 2 R, but 2 R is in greatest integer. That's the biggest difference. And what you are seeing is that the answer would come out to be E. And how would you arrive at that answer by creating this table? 
You don't have to create the table, but if you take these kind of values from point one to one, uh, three or four values, you would see that eventually you will find a value, especially around the time when it should double closer to 0.5. It doesn't double for the cases of 1.5 times R within the bracket. And that's how you would approach the problem. If there are any questions, please let me know uh, in the comment box. Thank you.